Welcome to Dusty Betty. My name's Tess, and in today's video, I'm going to be trying out a mullet for the first time. You may have noticed that one of these things is not like the other. This is my Ibis Ritmo. It's specced with 29 inch wheels and tires, but today I've thrown a 27.5 on the back to do a mullet experiment. I thought this would be cool to try on the bike that I ride the most. So I am headed out. I don't think this is gonna be a permanent change, but I just really wanted to experiment with this. And it's a frequently asked question that I get on Instagram and on the channel is, have you tried a mullet yet? So today is the day. So I've got my Ritmo upgraded to the S35 carbon wheels. So that's what I run every day. And what I've thrown on this is a race face wheel that Steve had around. It's the AR30 offset. Enough chit chat, let's do this thing. All right, I am on Brewer Trail. Get a little more of a do something gear. This is one of those trails that people usually shuttle. It's a really short run, um, but it's fun because you can get a few laps in it. Some people will self shuttle. That's what I did today. If you've got a bunch of friends, it can be fun to pile into a truck a few times in a row. I am starting to feel that rear tire cutting a little sharper on the corners already. It's interesting, this bike is slacker with the uh, smaller wheel on the back. I think it's a little bit too slack for me. It just feels, I've gotten used to cornering with this bike, with its current head tube angle and everything. <clears throat> Takes a little more uh, manhandling to lean the bike down in the corners. It's subtle, but you can tell. This trail is nice. It's steep enough that you can get cooking but it's not so steep that I feel like my brain is drinking through a fire hose. A lot of just little 12 inch ledges. I'd call it maybe a dark blue, maybe a single black diamond. So mulleting this bike, in addition to making the front end of the bike, more slack. It also makes the seat tube angle more slack and it's lowered the bottom bracket a bit. So far I am feeling the rear tire cutting the corners a little sharper um, and like I said I am feeling that it is a little more slack. I'm trying to think how to describe it. It feels like the bike is heavier which means I've got to lean it more aggressively but it also is a little bit feels a little bit weird to lean it more because it just feels like a little more unwieldy. Hey, I just need to take a quick minute to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, CompetitiveCyclist.com. They make videos like this possible. Um, just like all of you guys who watch my videos, they also play a big role in supporting what I do here. I love Competitive Cyclist because they carry a lot of my favorite brands and they also have some of the best customer service out there. They've got a live chat feature and super quick and easy returns. CompetitiveCyclist.com is offering 15% off for Dusty Betty viewers. Use code DUSTYBETTY15. That will get you 15% off your first order. One of my favorite things that I've ever got from CompetitiveCyclist.com is my Wahoo trainer. I love this thing as a busy mom. This has been such a lifesaver and they have lots of trainer options at lots of different price points for you as well. CompetitiveCyclist.com also carries a great selection of tires like this Maxxis Aggressor. And my absolute favorite shoe for when I'm riding clipped in, which is the Pearl Izumi X Alp Summit. So go to CompetitiveCyclist.com, use my link and use my coupon code. I also wanna let you guys know that I always include my personal competitive cyclist link in the description of my videos. And that's just a small thing you can do to help support my channel. So if there are things that you need to pick up to support your little mountain biking habit and you can use my link, that's just another little way you can help me out. All right, back to the show. I've mentioned my shoulder injury in passing a little bit on the channel, but not a ton. A couple years ago, my shoulder came partially dislocated a couple times. 
So the good news is I, I can usually get it back in pretty easily, but I started doing physical therapy for it and it got better, but this summer it's partially dislocated like two or three times. So that's kind of a bummer. I'm taking it a little bit easy, still riding, but doing the physical therapy for it again and hoping to get some more support around that shoulder to stabilize it. Cause as anyone else who struggled with this knows, these things do get worse. So I just wanna be really good to it really strengthen everything around it and hopefully have some fun riding. So taking a little bit easy, but I've got things like um, a Moab trip coming up this fall and I don't want to miss out on whoo, riding. So I want to be careful, but still get out and ride my bike and have a little fun. This is the BK tunnel. Ooh, this looks crazy. I don't even know where the way out is anymore. Give it a couple weeks, the path will emerge. I'm gonna climb on Grand Central for a couple minutes. Don't usually recommend climbing Grand Central, but it's pretty early in the morning. There's not really a lot of people out yet. My turn is coming up pretty soon anyhow. Hopping on Coyote. Back tire does get hung up a tiny bit more. It's, it's not huge. I'm just used to my last little pedal burst tipping me up over the edge of some of these. All right, now we're on Adobe Jack. It's usually dry as Hades here, but when we get the monsoon, we get some moisture in the air. Back wheel's not too bad. Not getting hung up like feeling it as much as I thought I would. At least on the rollable stuff like this. A little half ratchet action. 170 mil cranks are probably a little long for this configuration. But I think I'm gonna throw some 165 cranks on this bike anyway. Even if I put my 29er wheel back on the back. I wondered if the slightly smaller wheel would feel, if I would feel it spinnier since it's slightly smaller, but nah, I'm not really noticing. It is really a pretty cool concept, you know, having that roll through on the front wheel to help suck you through kind of awkward chundery stuff. But yeah, you can definitely feel that back tire tracking tighter in the turns. It would actually, on a kind of techy, climby stuff where you're picking your way through, it'll probably take a couple weeks to get used to that so that you're not accidentally getting hung up on things. But on smooth turns like that, where I'm not pedaling, it's really nice. It's a high school mountain bike race season. Anyone out there involved in that? It's fun stuff. I've got practice later today. I love working with our student athletes. We got a great group this year. Even our B group is getting pretty swift. On some of these turns I'm climbing, there's a rut in the middle from the rain. And I just gotta be thinking about where that back wheel is tracking so I don't get it stuck in there. But if this was my all the time set up. I'm sure I'd get used to it after a few rides. All right, this will be fun. This is kind of a twisty section. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Can I keep it out of that rut? Yeah. Goodbye, Adobe Jack. Hello, Grand Central. Cool. Now I just got couple minutes moderate climbing on here this climb's not too bad it's a climb but not bad as i go up this climb i am starting to miss a little bit of my climbing momentum not bad but you do start to feel it after 
the first few climbing corners. <laughs> Last couple climbing sections. We got this, gang. Ooh. And we're up. Woo! Yeah. So far, I'm not really noticing the difference in wheel size and the rollover back there. Just the cornering. Definitely the faster I go, the less awkward the uh, slacker head tube angle is. Whee! <laughs> Feeling that tail end to swing around so quickly. And we're going this way. I can definitely see why this is a favorite setup for people. Still think I prefer climbing with 229s, but this is really fun on the downhill. Woo! A little loose. Yeah. It's fun to try and turn more at the last minute. Just to feel the difference. That spot always makes me nervous. Like, I could fly off the rails. Man, that's a trail, but it didn't feel like it. Everything's all weird after the rain. Woo! Yeah. Oh, there's a few rocks in here. Look out! Can't see them, but you sure can feel them. That was a cool and very fun experiment. I can definitely see why people like the mullet thing. Now the bottom bracket is a little bit lower with this setup. Honestly, I don't know if I was picking up on it on the cornering, but I definitely did feel it sometimes climbing ledgier stuff. Um, I did feel like I was going to clip a pedal a lot sooner. So if I was going to do this configuration, I'd probably put a little bit shorter cranks on it. However, that being said, the lower bottom bracket and uh, potential pedal strikes, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, which is really saying something in Sedona. But I will say in Sedona, we're quite accustomed to doing a lot of half ratchet work anyway, because there are so many climbs that you would just clip a pedal constantly if you weren't intelligent about where you were putting your pedals in your bottom bracket. So uh, noticeable at times, but not as big of a deal as I thought it would be. Uh, front end of the bike was slacker. Yes, kind of annoying at slower speeds. Yes, uh, kind of could forget about it at higher speeds going downhill. Uh, seat tube, I was feeling something on the climbs a little bit draggier and i was thinking at the time like maybe it is the smaller wheel not rolling through stuff but now that i think about about it probably a lot of it also was the seat tube uh, angle being slackened a little bit i just couldn't um i can usually just really spryly shoot through a lot of the climbing corners and i just felt a little more sluggish so i think uh, i think that that some of that could have been the seat tube i think for me i place a really high priority on climbing i think I'm still gonna stick with my 29 setup for now, but it was really cool. It could be fun to experiment with more in the future. And I definitely see why a lot of people 
uh, favor this setup, especially on downhill bikes. It's pretty cool. Thanks to everyone who encouraged me to make this video. I'm so glad that I finally tried it out. Thank you for watching. If you want to support this channel, like my video, subscribe, check me out on Instagram, and consider using some of my partner links if there's anything you need for your little cycling habit. I've got some competitive cyclist links and some other fun things for you. Thanks for watching. Get dusty.